All right, we've got a video we're gonna do here due to popular demand. Lots of people asking in the comments about how a either a new heating element gets hooked up or how the high limit thermostat goes on or the thermistor. Lots of questions about those. So we're gonna start this video off by taking the back panels off. So you're gonna take these screws off here with a 1 4th nut driver. You can do that with a socket or a drill bit, but you gotta get all these screws out. So let's do that. Okay, now we have the back off, timers exposed, wiring. This is the thermistor. It is essentially a safety switch. When it trips, it cuts the power here, cuts it so that no power can go down to the heating element. Um, this here is a high limit thermostat. And what it does is it essentially, it's open. And then when it gets to a certain temperature, it shuts down and cuts the power. Then when things start to cool down, it trips and opens up and allows it to run again. So it's kind of the opposite, where this trips and stays tripped and shuts it off, this one's on until it gets to a certain uh, temperature and then it shuts it off. And then when it cools down, it's got a little plate in here, it just flicks back and forth as the temperature goes up and down. Uh, this, I think, has something to do with the auto sensing. I'm not really sure. To be honest with you, I don't really know what this does, but if I remember correctly from a long time ago, it has something to do with auto sensing. Yeah, anyway, um, so then the power from here, so it comes through here, this allows the power to move through the coils. So in here you have this coil bed, and so the power goes in through all the coils and then out here. This goes down to the motor, comes back up, into this sensor. Now this is the sensor for the automatic drive. This is an automatic. So if you have an issue with your um, auto dry not working correctly and you don't have a wire that plugs in under here anywhere, you'd see it. It would come like, instead of being here, it might come and go back in here. Then this is likely the culprit. I, although I will say I've never replaced a single one of these in 10 years. I've never had one go bad. That doesn't mean they don't go bad. Um, but I've never had to fix one, not even once. Uh, this is the thermal fuse, and when this trips, the whole dryer just goes dead. You might still get the light inside on the drum, maybe, but my experience has been that uh, the whole thing just goes completely dead when this trips here. Um, and then that's pretty much how the cycle works. So this red wire starts up here, the signal is sent, comes down through here, as long as this isn't tripped, it keeps going, and then hits your coils, heats all of that up, goes down. Uh, once the motor starts, these two things work together, so if there's an issue with either, they can kind of trip each other out. Comes back up through this sensor here, and it's all tied together by this one. This one also, I believe, ties in to the door switch. At least the door switch wire is blue also. But the door switch can also shut down the motor and the heat. So you have a couple of stops in there. So that's how this works. Now I think where some people are running into a problem here is they've got a new part and they're confused by this piece here. Okay, this is what the new part should look like if you have this little wire. Then your new part should look like this. Okay, here's your thermistor. Right, which you don't need to buy these. In the other video I showed that you can take these off and whack them really hard on the ground to reset them. There's a little uh, flimsy metal plate in here and it pops one direction when this goes bad. So by whacking it on the ground, it pops it back the other way and you can continue to use those. I showed that in my other video. Uh, now this piece here, our high limit thermostat, is a direct replacement. You just pop this one off, put this one on and it all kind of goes right back together the way it's supposed to. But I think what some people are having issue with and what I've run into before is you get a part that looks very similar to this except it has this connection on both ends. Okay, you're missing all of this stuff here. You just have two of these and then they give you this. And you're like, okay, what do I do with this? So what you would do with this, all this thing does here, okay, is it takes this end 
and it brings it out to the other side of the heating element here, all the way over here, see? If I can get that to focus. It just connects the orange wire, this side of the heating element, and then we're plugging into this side of the heating element. So we're getting both sides of the heating element. This is technically right here on this side, and this one comes out on this side. That's how that works. So technically you could bypass all of this and just take this red right here and plug it on that side of the heating element. Then the heating element would just go. There would be no starting or stopping. Okay, but obviously we wouldn't want to do that. But so you got to think of it like this red wire is plugged in on this side over here, runs through the coil and comes out on this side and keeps moving along the chain. So that's all this does. So if you get one of these that has the other side looks like this, all you have to do is connect this side to this side and your the orange needs to piggyback. So that's what this does here. Okay, so that's all this does. If this where the side, you're sitting there wondering, what do I do with this? You plug this in like this, your orange is gonna piggyback right there, off that guy, and then you plug this piece in over here on this side, so that this red coming from the top goes to this side, through this. So it would plug in like this. Now imagine, of course, none of that's there, but your piece needs to look like this with your red coming off, piggyback the orange on there, and have this come and plug in on that side. You see, that's what's happening with this piece. This is plugged in right here. So that's how that works. And you know, it's definitely easier just to order the right part, but if you're sitting here with parts and you need your dryer to work, that's how that works. And then this is pretty self-explanatory. If you have to replace this here, if you wanna give that a shot, then you just move the wires off of this. Doesn't matter which way they go. None of that matters on these because it's just passing through one side and out the other side. Same here, passing through one side, out the other side. Now, if you use a multimeter, this should read continuity, so it should beep at you. Okay, this should beep at you from this side over here to this side. You can measure it from here to here. You can measure it from up here to down here, but don't, don't measure the orange. There's nothing really to measure there it's from here to here. Uh, a lot of times I will just reach over here and go from these two sides because you want to find out if this is uh, if you've got a connection or if it's broken here and you need to replace the heating element. So if no beep here, then you need to pull your two screws out and take a look. Let's do that real quick. All right, so I just pulled my two screws out. There's one there. There's one there. Whole thing's going to pop off. All right, and you have these coils here. Now, if you have a break in these coils, then you won't get continuity. This looks great, though. There could still be a break in there, but as good as this looks right here, there's probably not. So if I connected my multimeter leads up, it should give me continuity and beep at me. The other thing you want to check for, though, and that I've had happen in the past, is if you're just running through with your multimeter, check in and you hook it up here and you get a beep and you move on but you're still having issues you need to check from one of the leads one of the sides maybe both sides to ground because sometimes and what typically happens is when these go bad they heat up and this plate down in here will bend real bad either push in or bend out and these little coils can break and then attach themselves to the ground or to this plate back here and so half of it will work and it'll be grounded and short out and the other half will be dead and you have all kinds of issues or it can blow this fuse. So if you keep coming in here checking this and you replace this and it blows it immediately and you're like what's going on because this tests out good, we'll check it to ground or pull it off and visually inspect it and make sure none of these are reaching out and, and you'll see like a big burn spot on the back here or within the plate. So that's tricked me a couple of times before. It's always best. If uh, you if this is blown out, you always want to pull this off and visually inspect it and make sure nothing's grounded out. Because typically what causes these to blow out is um, this piece will go bad. And when these, when these go bad here, what it does is instead of like this one, where this one will shut off and not allow heat to come through, so your dryer will just run and run and run and never heat, right? This does the opposite. When this goes bad, it allows the power to flow freely 
and it just gets super hot and overheats. And that will trip this, that's what this is for. It's in case this fails, there's your backup. This will trip and shut it down. Or if this fails and this has gone bad, this can blow. But most typically this will blow if you have something grounded or you come up here in the timer and if there's a contact in the timer that is shorted out or gone bad, or if you have a wire like up in here that is rubbed raw and it's hit. So what I'm trying to say is typically this goes bad if there's a short in the system somewhere. Sometimes these wires here can rub raw up against this metal and you got bare wire touching and it blows this fuse. So whenever I have one of these that's bad, I check all my wires, I check this, but nine times out of 10, more like 99 out of 100 times, this has got a coil that's reached out and touched ground and blown this or this is bad. So that is how this wiring system works. If you're trying to figure out how to replace this heating element, if you're having issues with it, uh, I think I've given just about all the tips that I know here. Uh, I can tell you that if you've checked through all of this and everything's hooked up correctly and you've got continuity everywhere you're supposed to have it, and for some reason you're either still not getting heat or you keep tripping this here, then you need to check in your timer. It's probably gonna be within the timer. And if you go to my playlist under appliance repair videos, you'll see I have two different videos about te tearing these down, checking those connections, because it's a real common issue with these three connections here and a little pin inside of here that gets worn down and it allows too much slack, which causes some arcing and all kinds of issues there. So guys, I hope this helps somebody out. I hope that uh, answers some questions from one of my other videos. I'm gonna link this to that video. But if you found this information useful, uh, helpful, let's share it and like and subscribe. That will get this video out to more people trying to do these repairs and save some money. And that's kind of the whole purpose here. So I do appreciate you taking the time to watch my video. Thanks, you guys have a great day.